everybody, Olivia Jones, Clean Coast Officer Northwest here on the beach with Dr. Prani Rashigan. We're going to look at some harvesting of seaweed to go along with our cook along later on at 5.30. So I'm just going to ask Prani a few questions about the basics of seaweed harvesting before we get going. So here we are on the lower shore and the seaweeds are looking absolutely fabulous. The one that's closest to me here is the beautiful Pimontalia elongata. So long, so beautiful, you would know it as sea spaghetti. And I'm going to take a little bit of this sea spaghetti. In general, we take about less than a third for sustainability with my sharp scissors. So I'm going to take some for my salad later on. I take another little bit from over here. And I'm going to show you where this originates from. So would you believe it starts from these tiny little buttons, these little buttons here. And out from that come these two fronds and then it grows and grows and grows. It's so beautiful, it's so delicious and it's got a kind of a nuttiness to it. And yeah, we're going to have that one later. While I'm here, I'm going to show you right beside my basket a seaweed that's really traditional. It's our corrugated moss. And every grandmother has a recipe for this to make it into a, a remedy for a chest infection. So again, I'm going to actually have a little snip, just so as we have it here in our basket, a little snip here and there of our corrugated moss, uh, just so as that we have it in case we want to use it later on. Now you're probably noticing another seaweed here. This one is one of our big deep water kelps. Let's trace it back. It's the Laminaria digitata and it breaks up into fingers. That's why it's called digitata. So these are like fingers. And again, this is a, a beautiful one to enjoy. Uh, very, very important over in uh, Asia. And right beside it, we see another beautiful seaweed. Uh, this one looks a little bit like a boa, and it's the uh, sugar cup, or the Saccharina latissima. And when it dries, it has a sugary little substance on it, like a white powder. Again, these are very high in iodine, so we do need to be careful with them. So these are just some of the seaweeds that are just looking really gorgeous on the lower shore at the moment. So here we have uh, found some uh, of the ulva. Now this is uh, unmistakably a green seaweed. You can see it here um, if you just come in close up. Uh, you'll be able to see that it actually has little gaps in it, little holes in it. So that um, indicates that it's probably the ulva fenestra because that's a window. Now we also have uh, Lactuca and Rigida, but about seven different uh, versions of this on the, on the um, Irish shores. So we have it here and we have some here. Oh, that one actually has broken off. And we have it just all around me here. So I'm going to uh, harvest, you can see, just a little bit of it. A little bit from each one is what I'm going to take because I'm not going to dislodge it, just going to take a little bit from this one and I'm going to take a little bit from here and I'm going to take a little bit from here. That's dislodged, it's probably fresh enough. It actually is, it looks quite fresh, but it's obviously dislodged just by the wave action uh, because the sea itself will do quite a lot of damage to the seaweeds. Uh, so that's why we as humans have to be so careful that we don't do any additional damage. So we'll just take that little bit there from that one. Uh, this, this seaweed is actually quite pungent. Uh, it's really uh, one of those that doesn't, even though it looks like a lettuce, uh, it doesn't actually taste like a lettuce. It's uh, one, like, more like a heritage lettuce, quite uh, pungent. But I'm going to do a gorgeous pesto with this. So it's really worth finding it and harvesting it. You do have to be careful that you don't harvest in an area that's near a port or that's near any sewage. You need to be very careful because this, the ulvas in general can grow in an area where there is some uh, 
different nutrients coming off the soil that aren't necessarily what you want near your, your actual seaweeds. So let's have a little recap while we're down here at the lower shore. So if you come in and have a little look, this is one of our baby sugar cups, our baby saccharina, and this is a big daddy here. So you can sort of see that difference and see the way they grow. And of course we have our little buttons for our himantalia, for our sea spaghetti, which is just right here. So it grows from that. This is a really good example here where you have your little button and then the fronds are coming out and branching and going elongated, like really long, as we know. And again, we're going to just harvest some part of that, about a third of part of the plant is the important thing. So we found the gorgeous pepper dillisk, uh, Osmundi panafidides, its Latin name. It's really peppery. I have a little look here. Um, it's one of these very dainty little seaweeds and it's on the flat plain. And I'm just going to snip a little bit off. Chefs absolutely love it because it gives a real kick to food, particularly salads. I'm going to use it in a salad, but actually, do you know, it's really nice in a, in a sauce for fish as well. So just a little bit is all you need. So we'll just take another little snip here and you can see how it's in the, the flat plane. It will sit flat on my hand and maybe another little bit from underneath here. It actually bleaches quite yellow when the sun uh, gets, when it gets exposed to the sun. But where it is here now, just uh, under that little bit of seaweed, uh, it was very sheltered. So it's a nice dark red and it belongs to the red classification of seaweeds. So we're still at the lower shore and I've just spotted the gorgeous uh, little bunny ears. Now, its Latin name is Lomenteria articulata. And I think Lomenteria is, is a little kind of a segment. And, or maybe articulata is where it's articulating. And it ends in little bunny ears. So it's gorgeous for children to kind of pop this into a little salad. It's such a tiny little seaweed and it just keeps on branching until it finally ends with these little little bunny ears that are just popping up. I'll just, I'll just take some off into my hand and, and I can show you just how dainty it is. And of course you can guess by the uh, color of it that this is a red seaweed. So you see the little articulations and then it just sort of pops up with two little bunny ears. So quite a fun seaweed, especially if you've got children on the shore. So we're now up at the upper shore and here's a little summary of what we have uh, harvested already. So we've got our lovely uh, ulva here, our green seaweed, our brown seaweeds and our red seaweeds. So we've got an example of the three types of seaweed, three classifications of seaweeds on the shore. So we're going to harvest one last red one uh, before we finish up. So it's in here on the upper shore and it's Dumontia contorta. So you can see it in there. It's twisted like a licorice stick. So you can see the twists and the turns on it. It's contorted and it comes from a single little disc down here and then it branches uh, irregularly. So I'm going to take a little snip off it. Now the reason I'm harvesting this one is I'm going to use it with mushrooms and uh, in a salad as well. So it's just one of those great little ones that you can just add in and you can see it there with its little twisted, like, it doesn't taste like licorice uh, but it actually looks a uh, little bit like a, a licorice stick. So I'll get some more of it for my for my little salad. Uh, that's some more of it there. You see the little twists in it. Dumontia contorta. So I'm setting that red seaweed down on top of the green one there for that little bit of contrast. So look at our gorgeous little basket of seaweeds. We've got our reds, our greens, our browns. We don't need too much. Uh, this is just absolutely perfect. And Come and join us now for the cook along in the kitchen.